This is the Heart of LAFC Podcast, Episode 1. Coming to you directly from sunny Southern California, you are listening to the Heart of LAFC Podcast. And now, here is your host, Jerry Jimenez. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Heart of LAFC Podcast. My name is Jerry Jimenez, your host, your friend, your insider into the Los Angeles Football Club. Thank you so much for joining us for our inaugural episode of the Heart of LAFC Podcast. This is your show. What that means is that you have the power to control what I talk about. Please follow our social media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, And also feel free to drop us a line over at www.heartoflafc.com. Let us know what you want to hear. Who do you want to hear from? What should we talk about? We want to make sure you're getting everything that you want out of this show and more. Today, we will talk about the story so far. What has happened since the day Los Angeles was awarded a new MLS team. This episode will recap everything that has happened up to this point. We'll discuss the announcement of the team, the ownership group, the Crest and Colors revelation, the stadium groundbreaking, and, of course, the academy program currently underway. Let's go ahead and hit the ground running. Let's get to it. So, uh, this is the moment that we have all been waiting for. Uh, If I can uh, have a couple of scarves here. It's my pleasure to bring up Henry Nguyen to officially launch LAFC. Thank you. Henry. Awesome. Okay, let me get another. And his partner here in Los Angeles, Peter Goober. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And the man who will make it happen on the ground, Tom Penn. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, guys. A new era for Major League Soccer in Los Angeles began October 30th, 2014, as Major League Soccer Commissioner Don Garber announced that a new team has been awarded to an ownership group then led by entrepreneur Henry Wynn, sports entertainment leader Peter Guber, and sports veteran Tom Penn. The new club is scheduled to debut in 2017 in a new soccer stadium in the greater Los Angeles area built specifically for that team. With its star-studded 22, yes, count them, 22-member ownership group, the club has a firm financial base on which to stand. And along with uh, Wynn, Goober, and Penn, the new team's ownership group includes Alan Shapiro, Tony Robbins, Bennett Rosenthal, Brandon Schneider, Chad Hurley, Harry Sow, Erwin Rage, Jason Sugarman, Kirk Lacombe, Larry Berg, Magic Johnson, Mia Hamm Garcia Parra, Mike Mann, Mark Leslie, No More Garcia Parra, Paul Schaefer, Rick Welts, Ruben Nalaningam, and Vincent Tan. The ownership group would later add five more owners in Brandon Beck, Tucker Kane, Lon Rosen, Mark Shapiro, and Will Farrell. If you're doing the math, that brings it to a total of 27 all-star owners. We'll be releasing a series of blog posts, which we are calling LAFC Owner Spotlight, where we'll get to know each of the 27 owners a bit more in detail and what they do and where they came from and how they made their wealth, actually. So you can find the first one, Get to Know Mia Ham, over at www.heartoflafc.com under the blog area, or find a link in our show notes as well. The club has since been pushed to begin playing in 2018, which, you know, obviously we're all sad about. But nevertheless, the first years have flown by. Let's take a listen and add a quick recap of what the first year was like for the Los Angeles Football Club. A new era of soccer here in Los Angeles is beginning. Starting now. In Los Angeles. This is the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. We're building from scratch. Journey is long, arduous, and uncertain. To stand here amongst you all, really the co founders of this club, is one united entity. We want to unite Los Angeles through the beautiful game. A new era of soccer here in Los Angeles is beginning to bring something where the people of Los Angeles can be proud of and feel a part of. Get excited, get hyped, get ready. Here we come. Wee! Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Welcome to the club. 
On February 21st, the Sports Arena site was announced as a front runner for LAFC's future home, one which many believed would be the best option as far as its proximity to the heart of Los Angeles. And in May 2015, LAFC revealed their plans to build the new Cathedral of Soccer in America in the 9th District. The team didn't release much news between then and September, other than keeping pretty active on social media, which, you know, they're awesome at. This tells me that they were concentrating on securing the sports arena site for a new stadium during that time. And work behind the scenes was slowly starting to appear in the news. And in early September of 2015, LAFC released their colors campaign where they asked their supporters for input with choosing which colors we wanted to represent us. And for two weeks, each day, they posted a different image with a different color. In September 26, 2015, LAFC hosted a supporter workshop at the Los Angeles Gensler office where supporters had the opportunity to brainstorm and provide ideas in regards to the stadium experience that they wanted. Everything from food to phone apps was discussed, and uh, I had the honor of being a part of this workshop as well as my wife, and it was quite an experience. It was great to see that LAFC from very early on truly cares about what we want as supporters, and we got to talk about all sorts of really, really awesome things. They fed us, which, I mean, that in itself was a pretty good, and, you know, we got some beer it was it was a great great time and we have been asked for input in almost all aspects of the club since its inception and the supporters workshop was a great way for them to show us that they were serious about building together along with us this is a historic moment to stand here amongst you all the really the co-founders of this club to have your input your energy your passion your ideas here is really 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 important we want to be creative, united, inclusive, and we want to be engaged. It's all about your ideas, so we want to hear from you. And then finally, on January 7, 2016, the moment we had all been waiting and hoping would come was finally here. The crest and colors were revealed during a morning press conference at one of the more iconic locations in the city, the Los Angeles Union Station. Our crest begins with our great city, L.A., done in the Art Deco style of our history. At its heart lies the iconic wing, paying homage to the City of Angels, a global symbol of power, mobility, and great aspirations. The shield is from our city's seal, and our colors black and gold. They embody the success and glamour of our history and the strength and texture of our streets. These are the colors. These are our symbols. This is our crest. We are LAFC. I'm telling you guys, I get chills every single time I hear that. Uh, During the crest announcement press conference, uh, LAFC also announced the addition of Brandon Beck, the co-founder of Riot Games and co-creator of the uber-famous video game called League of Legends. And we also witnessed a Kanye-esque interruption as Will Ferrell interrupted owner Mia Hamm during her speech. You know, we wanted to be a part of this club and I wanted to be a part of this club uh, because of the influence soccer and specifically sports can, can have in people's lives. And, and I'm hoping that we can continue to share that passion uh, with all the people that come to our stadium, that it's a stadium meant for fans and for families. And, um, you know, uh, hi, hi, Will. You, you want in? It looks like you're in. Um, <laughs> We're doing this? Okay. So I'm pleased to announce after his stellar record as coach of kicking and screaming. Um, uh, oh no, that's, that's for another day. Um, no, to be honest with you, the newest member of our ownership group at LAFC, the great Will Ferrell. <laughs> Uh, 
this is not a, uh, a joke. <laughs> I am actually a, uh, a member of this fine ownership group, uh, and it is very exciting to... Uh, I've never been a part owner of anything, so... Uh, I'm still part owner of a, an 84 Toyota Camry with my brother. Um, and it is uh, thrilling to, uh, to see a turnout like this, uh, to already see a fan base developing. The fact that we have uh, Palmdale in the house is pretty impressive. If we're already reaching out to Palmdale, you know we're in good shape. Um, <laughs> I started playing soccer uh, in the mean streets of Irvine, California when I was eight years old. I played on the Kickers, then the next year was the Bulldogs, then the third year was the Cheetahs. So some pretty impressive teams uh, and uh, continued to play club soccer. Uh, I have three boys uh, who all play soccer. My wife played uh, soccer at Pomona. Uh, so to say that soccer is, is a part of our lives uh, is an understatement. And uh, uh, so I'm thrilled to, uh, to be here today and, uh, and, and thanks to this wonderful uh, ownership group for having me. So thank you. Being there to witness this event firsthand was something I will never forget. And the party continued. Later that night, in the same location, we enjoyed what I would call our first LAFC rally, an event for all of the supporters of LAFC. So we got a big supporters event tonight. Very excited about, you know, nothing better than getting all of your great supporters together. We haven't kicked off a ball, but we've got incredible community support so far. Uh, and we're looking to continue to build that towards kickoff in March 2018. When I look out into this room tonight, this is what I always envision. Our great city, the great diversity of it, all of us coming from all over parts of this great world. We are going to unite the world city the world's game. And when that ball kicks off in March 18, it ain't 11 on 11. It's 11 versus the city. It's 11 versus LAFC. It's 11 versus With the crest and colors unveiled, the visual identity of the team was set, and along with that came time to really prepare for one of the most important factors of this team, its very own stadium. And while being interviewed at the crest reveal, managing partner Henry Wynn said, and I quote, we of course have some very big ambitions, but if you're going to build a great club, if you're going to win cups and win championships, you've got to have a process. You've got to have a culture, and that's what we want to establish. I think that's the unique opportunity of having this club built from the ground up. Obviously, so much of our focus has been on the stadium and what's happening as we build the identity of this organization. But this is a year as we get the stadium entitlements in place. As the shovel goes in the ground, we can start turning our focus towards the technical side of our club, finding our technical manager, our coach, and then start building our roster of players that will represent the kind of culture and style that we want to play. But first came the groundbreaking ceremony. It was time to start demolition of the sports arena, and on May 8, 2016, Almost exactly one year after LAFC announced its stadium plans, the City Council officially approved the plans for the stadium, and on August 23, 2016, the shovels would finally hit the ground at Exposition Park, where the supporters would have the first ever march to the site of what will be their new home come 2018. Being there was such an amazing experience as we chanted through Exposition Park and into the sports arena area where we would hear from the mayor of the city and a few of our owners. Start now. Three, two, one. We're thrilled to announce Bank of California as our official naming rights partner on the Cathedral of Soccer in America. It's been almost 10 years that we've been looking at this building. Anybody that thinks building a stadium in downtown Los Angeles on the main street is an easy deal, not a chance. We're not just here to build a stadium or to build a team. All the owners here are really committed to doing everything we can to help the community to reunite. People now can live and work and come to enjoy a great soccer game and a soccer team right in their own community. A soccer-only stadium with a view of downtown 
is a crazy dream, and now it's happening. Today we write our own chapter, the chapter of the Los Angeles Football Club. We're gonna gather together for something bigger than ourselves. This is where LA unites. The Bank of California Stadium. Larry Berg, our lead managing owner, announced the official naming rights partner as Bank of California and reveals the first rendering of our stadium with the Bank of California name emblazoned on its structure. We then got to welcome Mayor Eric Garcetti, like only supporters can, with chance. You guys are the best, best fans in MLS right here. Thank you, Peter and Henry and Tom and Larry and Irvin and Will and Brandon and all the owners that are here today. But we are here on hallowed ground. We are here in perhaps the best sports park in America, a place where the Dodgers and the Rams and the Raiders and the Chargers and the Trojans have all played. We're not just one, but two Olympics were held here, and we're going to get a third right here in Los Angeles in 2024. A place where the Clippers played, a place where Bruce Springsteen couldn't stop playing, a place where John F. Kennedy accepted the nomination to become President of the United States of America in that stadium. And tonight, Nelson Mandela came to. But today, we write our own chapter, the chapter of the Los Angeles Football Club, a downtown team in the heart of a great city, and a city which its spirit is represented in the fans, in the owners, and in this city, which I think is the best sports town in the world. What do you think? El nuevo hogar del LLFC esta arena es en el corazón, está en el corazón de la comunidad aquí en Los Angeles. And we have an amazing community, one which has always stepped up to do the right thing. And I want to thank Bank California because they had the right colors. That's partly why they got the sponsorship. But an amazing bank that has stepped up to be a part of this. And my fellow colleagues, Current Price, I know you're going to be speaking, but stand up, give them a round of applause. The council member who worked with me hand and glove to get this done. Mark Ridley Thomas, our great supervisor. Karen Bass, our great congresswoman. My predecessor, Antonio Villaragosa. Stand up, Antonio. We couldn't do it without those who come before us and those who work hard with us. And this is going to be a year-round football city. In fact, we actually will have, between American and soccer football, we're going to have football 12 months of the year. And fans that come to Los Angeles will see and feel the spirit of this town a place that's investing, a place that has cut its unemployment in half, a place that's the infrastructure capital of America, and the jobs that are going to be created here, not just during the construction, but the permanent jobs to serve our great fans and the people will be good guests, right, for the fans who come from other teams? Yeah, you know, cause for those who come in, we're going to show them a great experience. And I hope everybody will use public transportation because this town has become the public transportation capital of America. The Expo Line is the best way to come right here to this stadium. And Measure M this fall will allow us to get that job done. Finish our subway lines, finish our light rail to the airport, finish those things to improve our freeways and get that job done. But I'm so pleased to be here on behalf of four million amazing soccer fans in this city. We have over 160,000 young people in LA who play soccer, over three million in this city. My former professor Sunil Gulati is the man who's leading this nationwide movement. And I don't just want the Olympics here in 2024. We want the World Cup to come back to LA in 2026. So, hoy celebramos este gran día. Gracias a los dueños, a los fans. Y vamos, LAFC. Let's go, LAFC. Thank you. On that day, we also got to listen to the amazing Tony Robbins. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Uh, the amount of energy and effort that's brought this day into reality is an army of people that are here in the audience and around. Can we just give a hand to everyone, the unknowns, the knowns that have made this happen? It's quite extraordinary. I'm, uh, I was born and raised here in L.A., and downtown L.A. is hollowed ground for me personally. I used to go up to the Bonaventure Hotel and climb the stairs, run up the stairs to try to get enough strength and then sit up there on the top of the five and look down and see the city I wanted to make a difference and conquer. And to be here today is such a privilege because I couldn't afford to go to a Rams game. I dreamed of it, or a Trojans game. My father was a parking attendant who worked for 40 years underground collecting people's money and stamping it. And I'd come down to see him every now and then. And the beautiful thing we did do is we came down here to be in the energy. 
We came in the free spaces. And I'm really proud that we're building such incredible free spaces around this area. We went to the museums, and I have such beautiful memories there. And I think what this team and what this entire movement is about is creating memories for family. It's really that, that moment that you'll remember for the rest of your life with your father or your mother or your brothers or your sisters or your dearest friends. And if we look at our country, we have 300 million people here, a little more than that now. And half of us live in just 12 communities, 12 urban communities in this whole country, 150 million plus. And LA is one of the biggest. And for those that was born and raised here, we'd have to say the best, wouldn't we? Yeah. And so if we look at it, though, what brings communities together? If you read all the research, ironically, sports teams are the glue for many communities. And they certainly have been for LA. And there's so many beautiful teams here already. But downtown here in this community, this is going to be the team that everyone's going to talk about because almost this passion is going to be about the community. We're not just here to build you know, a stadium or to build a team. You know, all the owners here are really committed to doing everything we can to help the community to reunite. We're living in times of such division. And we're building a facility here that we'll be all gathering together in very shortly, in less than two years. And when we come together here, we're going to gather together for something bigger than ourselves. This is where LA unites. This is the place where we'll come together under one roof with one purpose, to win, to break through, to share, to play. Because united, we have so much power. Divided, we have none. And if we rise together, as we will, as we build this together, and we build the team, we build our community, we'll have something to be proud of that sports always brings, and that is the best in all of us. And so I'm very excited to see what we can build together, what we're going to create together. I feel privileged to be with these men and women on this stage who've done so much already, and I'm so excited where we're going. We're going to take this extraordinary team, this extraordinary facility, and we have an opportunity to do something for the most extraordinary community that we all love here in L.A. And I will tell you right now, none of us here will miss the mark. So I'm grateful to be a part of this process, and mark my words, the best is yet to come. Next up, let's listen to what Magic Johnson had to say. Oh, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Don't make me put on those little hot pants I used to wear for the Lakers now again. God is so good, and what a blessing it is to be here. Over 30 years ago, People told me I was crazy to invest in this community. And to see what Peter and I started off when we built the Magic Johnson Theater not too far from here. And then I called a man named Howard Schultz who brings Starbucks into this community. And what did that do? Create jobs. And I worked with Mark, Curran, Karen this unbelievable mayor that we have. But what I'm really proud of, yes, we're getting ready to get a new stadium. We're going to have a great soccer team because Tom and the staff will make sure of that. But, Stephen, what you said, that's life-changing. When you talked about people in this community will have access to capital, to loans. There will be jobs created because of this team and this great organization. See, the soccer team is one thing, and the new stadium is another thing, but people now can live and work and come to enjoy a great soccer game and soccer team right in their own community. Now we've changed the game, and that's what it's all about. So for me, that's why I'm proud to be a part of this ownership group. This ownership group looks like the city of Los Angeles. And so, Larry, we're happy that you're leading the efforts now and the two gentlemen that you brought on board. Larry lives across the street from me. From me. I almost killed him because he, his name is Larry Bird. <laughs> but he's all right. That's my man. We're, we're great friends. Oh, yeah, the Laker days. And the day would not be complete without hearing from the hilarious Will Ferrell, who was welcomed by supporters with a chant that said, We got Will Ferrell. We got Will Ferrell. We got Will Ferrell. We got Will Ferrell. I don't know what that means exactly, but thank you. Uh, please don't abduct me after this. Uh, the mayor already mentioned we already have the greatest fans. We don't even have a team yet. We don't even have a player yet. We have the greatest fans in MLS. 
I was worried uh, that I was going to be cold today, but they gave me my scarf. Uh, it took the chill off. What an amazing day for uh, the city of Los Angeles, amazing day for soccer in L.A. to think that of a soccer-only stadium with a view of downtown is a crazy dream, and now it's happening. Now it's happening. Um, the mayor mentioned all the historic events that have taken place in the sports arena. He left out one major one, and that was the filming of Blades of Glory. It took place right in, in the sports arena. The seminal movie on figure skating. I was in that beautiful husk of a building for a month, uh, but I'm willing to sacrifice that for the growth of the city of Los Angeles and the sport of soccer in LA. Um, what is my role on the team? I'm just the, uh, I'm just the eye candy. I'm the show pony. Uh, these guys have done all the heavy lifting, but I have, uh, I have found out I'm gonna be head's groundskeeper. Um, I don't know anything about horticulture or, or, or plants, uh, so, but I got two years to learn, so it's gonna be the best turf in the MLS, guaranteed. I also wanna make a bold prediction. Uh, we don't have our roster yet. We know there's a lot of interest from coaches and players to come and play here in Los Angeles. But I do know this. We will go undefeated in our inaugural season. I don't know how hard that is to do, but we, I have a pretty good chance we will do that. And after the groundbreaking ceremony, many of us got our first look at some additional working stadium renderings in the tent that LFC had set up. Uh, some of the specific areas within the Bank of California, like the clubs and seating areas. There's a place called Figueroa Club, if I remember correctly, which we haven't seen any renderings of. Uh, but I cannot wait to see more renderings of this place. You can see all of the officially released renderings now over at www.heartoflafc.com. Or go ahead and check out our show notes, and there will be a link there for you guys. The news and excitement didn't stop there. A few days later, on September 2nd, 2016... LAFC's U-12 U.S. Soccer Development Academy made its debut when the 2016-17 season opened and the games came against none other, that's right, the city rivals LA Galaxy. Two games were played that weekend, the first of which ended with a tie of 3-3, and the second game, however, would find a winner as LAFC beats LA Galaxy 4-2. The academy is off to a very good start. With John Thornton as the Executive Vice President of Soccer Operations, uh, Todd Saldana as the Academy Director, and Joey Cascio as the U12 Head Coach. And then also in Academy news, a partnership between LAFC and Slammers FC has been established, and on June 30th, U.S. Soccer announced the first 25 clubs that will be a part of the Girls Development Academy, an initiative that, uh, designed to accelerate the development of world-class female players. Uh, the new program, which will begin play in 2017, will be comprised of this a first group of clubs that are among the most elite in the United States, that is including LAFC Slammers. Make sure you check out the Academy website at lafc.academy for more information. This is going to do it for me, guys. It's going to finish our recap of the last two years for LAFC. Uh, once again, congratulations, LAFC. You've been around for two years. Uh, you guys are going to keep me busy in the next few. I can feel it. Uh, but everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you also sign up for our newsletter to keep up to date with all the news surrounding the club. Talk to you on the next episode. It's a really good one. We had to know Mr. Patrick Aviles, LAFC Supporter Relations. Thanks for listening. I'm Jerry Jimenez signing off. Stay golden. <laughs>